ordinary gamers play games with their hands. Some people play games with their feet, some use their voice, but I wanted to do something different. Something much more traumatizing than anything I've done before. Can you beat Fallout 3 with your eyes? To play Fallout 3 with nothing but my eyes, I spent $230 on an infrared eye tracker, the Toby Eye Tracker 5, and mounted it to my iMac with my own proprietary adhesive strip. The trash it came with didn't stick and I got lucky that I couldn't find my superglue. The Toby company has software that lets the eye tracker work in a handful of games, but none of them are Fallout and it's not full-fledged control. It's looking around in-game by turning your head, not complete PC control with only your eyesight. Windows 10 has some eye control accessibility options too, but those don't work in-game either. For that, I downloaded Project Iris. This program turns your entire monitor into a touchscreen for your vision. It's wild. Iris lets you map any key on the keyboard to a box on screen. The eye tracker's four sensors track your pupils at all times using infrared light and when they sense you've looked at the box, the key is pressed virtually. That allowed me to map most of the useful keys to boxes on screen. The controls I had on screen and their layout changed over time as I learned which keys were more useful than the others. The starter set should be fairly self-explanatory. WASD for movement, tab for the pit boy, space to jump, the arrow keys move through dialogue, escape to pause, run is Q, that's the auto run button, look up is a lie, don't believe what it says. And with that, you're ready to witness the most mentally exhausting challenge I've ever done. To prove that I was, in fact, playing with my eyes and not a controller or a keyboard and mouse, I turned on the webcam. But it's been a while since you've seen me. The last time was in December and that was well before my drinking got out of control. I'm a changed individual and I wanted to prove that by doing the worst thing I could think of. I bought a seductive French maid outfit and I gotta say, I make a women's medium look pretty damn good. Now, in my final form, the real game can begin and I can begin to explain what a f***ing nightmare this challenge was. What I didn't realize before starting was how difficult it is to maintain complete and total control over your eyes for hours on end. They're constantly subconsciously darting around to take in your surroundings. You don't really think when you look from one side of the screen to the other. You just do it and it happens. But here, I can't look over to the left side of the screen, or the right side, or the top, or the bottom without running the risk of accidentally pressing a button. Luckily, the toddler room is a free-for-all where nothing matters. I had all the time in the world to acclimate myself to the controls and realize I had no way to look down, bringing us to the first major bump in the road. Speed bumps come in pairs, trust me, I will get f again. Moving the mouse with your eyesight is not as simple as remapping a key on the keyboard. This is a mouse we're talking about, a living, breathing organism. There are complex mechanisms at play. The solution? Can you say, trackpad for your eyeball? That's exactly what I got, though at this juncture I was woefully unaware of what I'd just done. I spent minutes sitting there trying to fill out my special stats with that little bat unable to tell what was really happening. It had to be bigger. Mickey hit the medieval stretch machine, my playing field was substantially larger. I could now freely look around the world, solving all of my one-year-old problems. When I look at the upper left of the rectangle, my guy looks up into the left. The other directions work the same way. Special stats are endurance to take the pain, that's it. I followed dad into the future, the overseer gave me the gift of employment while I practiced being an owl by turning my head without moving my neck or body or maybe it was my eyes playing like Thomas the Tank Engine. With the Pip-Boy in my possession, inventory management becomes the latest slice of life to taunt me with its existence knowing full well that it's not meant for me to have in this lifetime. I have the data management screen, not the useful stats, not the middle button with the guns and the armor and supplies. In theory, I could hypothetically hit that button with my eye mouse. We'll come back to that. It's birthday time. That means conversation and pretending to thank the elderly. Navigating the dialogue menu and picking choices is thankfully pretty easy. Time stops in-game. It's real time, meaning my non-existent patience, that comes into play. If you thought for one second that I wouldn't find a way to skip through conversations, you're not a true Mitten Squad fan. Down in the basement, I obtained the BB gun from Dad and Jonas. Which brings us to combat. Combat is a no-no when your fire button doesn't work. You see, mapping mouse clicks to eye controls legitimately was the largest thorn in my side throughout this entire playthrough. And I don't mean that in a way that made the video better. It was annoying and made me mad. With the face cam, you'll probably see me get visibly annoyed. A lot. For the time being, I swept the problem under the rug and pretended it doesn't exist. I made the attack button the H key and the reload button the P key instead of them being the left and right mouse clicks. I aimed the BB gun. I fired the BB gun. 
I laid waste to the bug. Yes, aiming was an absolute motherfucker. Took a picture with dad for the scrapbook. Made sure to grab the bobblehead from his desk for good fortune in medical mishaps. Stumbled into the classroom and picked my skills. I can't heal or equip guns. I'm not picking locks or sneaking or doing the science. I took unarmed and whatever other two I happened to select by accident. Amada woke me up and the end of the tutorial began. Melee combat in Fallout 3 is what you'd expect from a 13 year old game. You don't have to sledgehammer your fist against their face to deal damage. Looking in their general direction, with them within arm's reach, is enough to score a hit. Stairs and sharp turns are an obstacle. Those two guards were using Tom Holden and his wife Mary as target practice. I saw a motto running towards the fire, a bold move when it's a hallway with two guys currently firing handguns indiscriminately at the end of it. The vault guard was the first boss fight to give me trouble. He's a moving target in the dark and I'm a cripple. It's not a fair fight to begin with. So, I ran to the overseer to tell on him. One of the other goons popped the door and used me as a pinata. Getting the overseer to hand me the keys to the vault door took a surprising few attempts. Maybe you didn't realize I added the quick save button in the upper left. Nothing will change me, I'm a quick save cuck till I die. I used that quick save button as a safety net that fell with me through the sky. With his keys, I continued getting my ass beat as I ran backwards towards the vault door. Used the key to unlock the door, grabbed the password, and hit the goddamn terminal. The only way out of this hellhole is to land the mouse on that little red power button. It may be difficult to grasp why this is difficult. There's no indication on the virtual trackpad itself of where I'm looking. All I have is the mouse cursor that I can only watch with my peripheral peripheral vision because I have to control the mouse with my main vision. This broke me in about three and a half minutes. Not record time, but still respectable. Believe it or not, I didn't put the Meg costume back on on the second day. I was wearing a sweater that I can never wear again because some f***ing idiot shrank it in the washing machine. Before continuing, I adjusted the controls slightly. Up and down are bigger and more prominent for the sake of redundancy. Quick save moved down to be easier to hit and much more importantly and equally as disturbingly, I found out you can assign controls to winks. So from now until forever, I will be winking at you constantly. No lies, it's a little f***ed up that this is even possible. However, it does make combat substantially easier since I've basically got two free buttons now. Maybe the big G in the sky knew what he was doing with my face after all. Then came the terminal again. Time moves differently when you're in tremendous pain. The one person watching this who's given birth, you feel me. Six straight minutes of trying to land the mouse on the power button. For a brief moment, I lightly brushed my hand against the devils, considering grabbing the mouse to cheat. But I didn't. More minutes passed as the fun faded from my soul. Second by second, until I hit my mark. Right on the money. But I still can't click the mouse. This is the second speed bump. At that point, I deemed it a technology issue. Macros for mouse clicks can be assigned to the eye blinks. It's a limitation of the software that mouse clicks can't be positioned on screen like other keys. I couldn't place a left click button next to the walk button. Later, I had more issues with the macros, but we'll get to that. For now, I cheated by clicking the mouse a single time. I'm gonna spoil a bit of this video by telling you that that cheat didn't matter in the long run because I ended up starting the entire challenge over later on. Outside, I soaked in the fresh air and rejoiced as the real game began. At level 2, I put the points into unarmed and speech. Speech was a mistake, I hit that by accident. Took Swift Learner for 10% more experience as my perk, and set off for Megaton in search of a bed. I barely made it out of the vault alive. I should point out now, I tried to keep my hands within the frame at all times, as proof I wasn't using a controller. As if I'm so talented that I could pull off faking this. Remember when I left an entire end card in the middle of my Halo Reach video? I'm not that good. In Megaton, I attempted to barter with Jenny Stahl, hoping for stim packs. Instead of going to the doctor for medical supplies, I went to the bathroom, got on my knees, and drank out of the toilet. I pulled an inception and drank my full until I'd taken more radiation damage than I was comfortable with. Before setting off into the wasteland, I thought through my options. Following the story is a safe-ish option. There are no surprises. It's very doable. Or I do a little bit of bullshit and head straight for a little lamplight to use speedrunning tactics to skip 90% of the game. I didn't want to spend any more time here than was necessary. F*** my dad, he can rot in the simulation, I'm going to play with the kids. At least, that was the plan until I got hit by an alien. In an act of astounding stupidity, I didn't disable all the mods I had installed for a different video. Trust me when I say the only two mods that had a positive effect were the first person camera and the refined inventory UI mods. That is to say, 
The benefits were purely cosmetic. The aliens shouldn't be here. I used the console command to freeze time and disable them. If you bitch about that in the comments now, you're gonna look real stupid in about two minutes. I made a friend not far from Vault 101. He betrayed me immediately. I accepted my fate, went down swinging, and dropped dead. I tried a different route, got set on fire that time, and used the auto run button to alleviate some of the pressure on me. There's still some pressure. I have to use the steering wheel while he drives blind. And accidentally glancing over the walk button will stop me in my tracks. That happened consistently enough that it still makes me mad watching it back. The memories are still fresh. This gameplay happened like 40 hours ago for me writing this. With the auto run key, I was able to make it across a good chunk of the map without issue. I could focus on avoiding danger and making it to Smith Casey's garage. Dad's down in the basement, but I'm not here for him. There's a free bed behind the counter. All I had to do to use it was clear out the critters infesting the station. A mole rat, a single rat roach, another mole rat broke my favorite leg, I took out two more down the stairs, and slept for hours. I only had to do it once to restore my health and heal my limbs. I earned that nap, and daytime is much more pleasant to watch. Lamplight's not too far from the garage. I took a few hits, but I survived without any serious injuries. Another day passed. The Santa hat remains. The blink commands have been swapped over to quick save and quick load. I could think of no other way to abuse the quick save quick load exploit to clip through the wall. It's easy to pull off, but you need movement while saving and loading, and being able to look around with the iPad while moving provides insane value. Plus, I'm still only using my eyes. Exiting the game to change what happens when I look at the walk button will remove the ability to use whatever key it replaced. There's a delicate balancing act here. Sure, I could have added more buttons, but why would I do that? That's effort. Having pulled off the wall clip, I made my way through Little Lamplight to the gate guarding Murder Pass, saved and loaded through the upper left corner of the gate, and entered Murder Pass. For some reason, all the f***ing mutants had fat men. They hit me with mini nukes over and over again. I knew what had to be done. I had no way to use any healing supplies I happened to have on me, and I'd have to make it all the way through Murder Pass and Vault 87. I didn't see that happening. So I started over. Nobody's ever done this shit before, and if I'm the one to do it, I'm gonna do it right. We can go through the vault a little quicker this time around. Special stats are for maximizing unarmed damage. Unarmed is conveniently from endurance. Intelligence for extra experience points when leveling up. Luck for critical hits and a small boost to all skills. Agility for why not, and it's on to the birthday party. I've gotten far better at playing compared to the practice round. Moving around the vault is child's play. I'm so good I went into the settings to remap controls with my eyes. The only time I touched the keyboard was to swap a single key. I don't consider that cheating. If it was, my decision to use VATS can be considered a punishment. Some minutes ago, I planted seeds in your mind about the problems I'd have with macros. It's time to harvest. See that enjoyment? It's not gonna last. One second. Skills are unarmed speech medicine. There are a variety of macros available for blinking an eye. Click and hold the left mouse button, click and let go, click the right mouse button, move the mouse cursor. Mouse controls are all exclusive to blinking. You saw it work with the rad roach just now. Stupid watch, you make me look bad. You saw it work with the rad roach just now. Blinking is detected in the software. Assigning a left blink to the left click and a right blink to the right click works on the desktop, but they were incredibly unreliable in game. I could sit there for minutes winking at the cute police officer I frozen in time and not once be able to select him as a target in VATS. Why was I all in on VATS? Because it would make fighting so much easier and therefore make the challenge less stressful. There's irony in here somewhere. I can taste it. I quit the game, attempted to rework the controls, and made just enough progress with them to become a force to be reckoned with. Many, many, many blinks are required to get one hit in on a single target. For context, it took me more than 15 minutes to kill those few rad roaches in the atrium, take out the guards protecting the overseer, and get his key. Before leaving, I looted some ammo and armor for the road. You never know what might happen, and reunited with my old friend, the terminal. Slowly, steadily, I moved the mouse over towards the power button. Did not get annoyed at all. Never. Not once. I quit the game again, came back, like, seconds later, and f***ing nailed it. From there, I escaped the vault as was my plan, dumped every point into unarmed, kicked a mole rat in the snout, and began my journey to the littlest light in the east, avoiding all the animals along the way. Soon enough, I found myself at the garage again. 
Inside, I dealt with the mole rats to clear a spot to sleep. My least favorite leg got broken, and I did the big crybaby maneuver of playing with the controls off camera. One hat later, Fallout 3 stopped working completely. The main menu's off limits to me now. I strayed too far from the sun. It doesn't really get any worse than this. I just kinda stew in this level of mild inconvenience at my job for another 45 minutes or so. What only a select few of you know is how deep down I live for this. I'd been playing this wrong since the very beginning. All that macro stuff, a complete waste. I flat out missed the mouse click option in the eye settings. I didn't see it. Oops, that epiphany brought about a kind of emotion I rarely feel. I needed a hug. I didn't get one, so I reached out to the memory of a good dog and held on tight. I loved that animal so much. Moments later, I regained my composure, played around with the different settings until I landed on a combo that worked significantly better, but still not perfectly. Individual blinks don't perform a single mouse click. They click and hold the mouse. In VATS, it's flawless. Outside of VATS, it continuously attacks or blocks, depending on the eye, until I blink again. It's a toggle of the mouse button in combat, and a mouse click in VATS. That's how you should think of it. Now that I can actually defend myself, I stand a chance of surviving any situation the game throws at me. With that newfound power, I went down to the basement to save my father. He's stuck in a recliner and can't get himself out of it. To perform this kind of dangerous rescue mission, I'd have to not only take my clothes off, I'd have to put new clothes on, because you can't enter Tranquility Lane if you're not wearing a Vault 112 jumpsuit. I did the unthinkable. I used nothing but my mind to line up the mouse, winked at the screen, and was in the items tab. Weapons, armor, stim packs, a new world lifted its skirt and flashed me. I took out the bat, used it to hammer a nail into the unarmed playthrough coffin. F*** my fists and all those points I put into unarmed. I'm using melee weapons now. Hopped into the chair and traveled to Tranquility Lane. Dr. Stanislaus Braun set up an abandoned house in the village where he can store his garbage. Leftover bottles, used cinder blocks, Trudy's broken radio, and a few other odds and ends. Touch them in the correct order, and you'll reveal a terminal that can be used to summon forth the Chinese communists. Activating them comes easy now. I move through the menus like a hot knife through butter. Landing on the power button didn't take too long, certainly far less time than the others. The heroes of Sovngarde arrived to set the vault dwellers free. I put on one of the suits of vault armor I'd stolen from home, and told my father to go do whatever he planned on doing in his life without me. At level 3, I dumped the points into melee weapons, spent several minutes trying to get out of Vault 112, and left to keep my little dream alive. No issues getting there. It's pretty much a straight shot from the garage to Little Lamplight. I used the Quick Save Quick Load exploit to clip through the wall and insert myself into Murder Pass. Stop! Right now! Think back to my past Fallout 3 videos. Can you remember a certain bug that always plagued me when I entered Little Lamplight in this manner? I'd forgotten about it too, until this specific moment. Little Lamplight's filled with kids, and Bethesda, in their infinite wisdom, decided that you can't kill kids in Fallout 3. To ensure you don't get any funny ideas, the Disable Player Controls command is triggered from behind the scenes as you load into Little Lamplight. You can't draw your weapons. Naturally, when you manipulate Fallout 3 with glitches, it stops working properly. The inability to draw weapons extended into Murder Pass. Unfortunately, I cannot show you that because I forgot to hit record after I bypassed the gate. The only evidence I had of the torment I suffered through was a handful of saves I made in those 23 minutes. I'd made it all the way to Fox before realizing what I'd done. I almost quit the challenge right there. The upside of my failure is that you can see a master class in eyeball-based movement. The super mutants barely touched me. I took some damage here and there, but for the most part I did good. In Vault 87 proper, I visualized the layout of the vault in my head, pictured each corner, each mutant, each doorway and stairwell that stood between me and my goal. The green bullies pushed me into a corner, started shooting me to death, I accepted my fate, got bored waiting to die, and reloaded a save by hand. In my inventory were 12 stim packs, 2 Advil, a stimulant, and a soda. The stim packs would be powerful enough to restore my health bar almost twice. So I have options and room to breathe, for now. The difficulty's been set to very easy since the dawn of time. My endurance is maxed out. I can take some punishment. Down in the test labs, I activated the fire alarm to release Fox from solitary confinement, faced the hallway of death with the most stoic expression I could muster, and hunkered down in Fox's room, hoping, praying, that he will kill all the monsters on the other side of the glass. The magnificent b did it. Fox saved my life and promised to give his in return if it came to it as a thank you for setting him free. He cleared the way to the Gek, retrieved it for me, allowing me to get abducted by Nobark Noonan and taken to the Enclave's base for questioning.
Guess who quit again? Day, I don't know, let's say four, began with a return to form. This adventure began with a maid costume, it has to end with a maid costume. I got two level ups from advancing this far in the story, and put all those points into medicine and melee weapons, put on my armor, and battled the Enclave, because I failed to convince the police officer I was his equal. I did get a sick time freeze as he burned off one side of my face with his laser pistol. The Enclave soldiers themselves aren't too tough to fight off one at a time. Three bashes with the bat and they drop to the floor. Agility being at eight replenishes action points in between confrontations due to how long it takes me to go anywhere. Closer to the president's chambers, I was on the receiving end of a ripper attack. Now the ripper is a special tool. The bat has to be swung over and over again to deal damage. The ripper though, just stick that out there, squeeze the trigger, and anything it touches gets torn apart. It also does three times more damage than the bat, meaning Enclave soldiers die in a single vat's attack. You'd think this would make the rest of Fallout 3 a cakewalk. I had other ideas. Taking individual items from a container or a body or when bartering is tricky because of where I place the buttons on screen. Enter takes any item I've selected, but E backs out of the interface entirely, and the up button messes with the selection process. As I looted the bodies for medical supplies and the ripper, I just took everything they had, which, in turn, made me over-encumbered. I was okay with that, to be honest. A slower movement speed does me no favors in combat. Outside of combat, the entire game becomes easier to control. It's not as frantic and crazy. I didn't have to make split-second eye decisions in the heat of battle. Up the stairs, I met with the president, whispered a little something into his ear to burn his paradise to the ground, took his virus, and went on my way. Eden still thinks I'm on his side, so the turrets and sentry bots on patrol still come to my aid as the soldiers loyal to Colonel Autumn attempt to end me. The only pickle I found myself stuck in involved a pair of soldiers with heavy weapons and a poorly timed quick save. Unwilling to use any of my remaining stim packs to heal an injury caused by stupidity, I reloaded a save and went even slower in my second escape. After surviving by doing nothing, I emerged outside, where Fox was mowing down the filth. Not me, I'm not filth. According to the email sent to every tenant in my apartment complex after my relapse, I'm a ruckus. But that was then. This is now. I'd been a good boy. At this moment, for two months and seven days. So I got a treat. Fox joined the party. He didn't ease the burden. He lifted the beast off the ground and carried it around his neck for an impressive amount of time. Remember, I'm over encumbered. I can't fast travel, and even if I could, I wouldn't risk using the map. It would take ages to line up the mouse on those tiny buttons. I set off on foot at a snail's pace for the Jefferson Memorial. Combat is irrelevant. Fox will take care of any threat before it has a chance to reach me. What he can't take care of is the incredible boredom that comes from walking across the entire f***ing wasteland. You might think, just hit the auto run button and distract yourself. Not an option, friend. Too many obstacles in the way. Look at all those rocks. It's a nightmare. Doing anything other than keeping my eyes locked in on the screen caused the controls to go all wonky. I sat there, doing nothing but watching the slow march towards the end for an hour. Around the 48 minute mark, I dumped all my heavy items into a dead mole rat Fox made for me. That dropped my weight down to 157 pounds and doubled my movement speed. Near the citadel, I went in the water for the first time, swam ashore, and found myself at the bridge to the Jefferson Memorial. To get around the obstruction, I jumped over the railing and did a single quick load and was in. A couple Enclave soldiers were waiting inside. I, of course, did not attempt to engage. I left that to Fox and entered the rotunda to secure the purifier. Many quests have been done out of order, so not everything is where it should be. The door to the purifier's been sealed shut, and no bark is inside. Clipping through the wall into the purifier is the only way to get in. To finish the fight, you've gotta talk to no bark to prompt a scuffle. In the final moment, I did what I haven't done. I pulled out a gun, pointed it at no bark, unloaded into him, and approached the console. The code, 216 was entered, and against every single odd, I beat Fallout 3 with my eyes. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.